Uh, good morning. Please go ahead now. Good morning, Uncle Yori, and uh, agree to this. Yes, thank you. Uncle Yori, this argument about uh, a same-fix ticket is neither here nor there. There is a saying in Yoruba land, there is an adage in Yoruba land that says, uh, you are lesson. It translates to, your conduct is your religion. What you do is your religion, not, the, not what you profess. Let me give you a few examples. Pashallah, the minister of work, is a Muslim. He has fixed about 75% of Trump payrolls in Nigeria in the past seven years. Those roads, is there any uh, Islam written on it? Is it only uh, Muslims that use the roads? Uh, the, uh, the immediate past Minister of Transport, Rotini Amechi, he has constructed over 3,000 kilometers of rail tracks. Those rail tracks that are going to be used or being used by Nigerians, who cares when, when they are using it, whether it is Muslim or, or Christian that constructed them? Nigeria has, Nigeria produced the first Nobel laureate, the first and only Nobel laureate about 35 years ago. What is the religion of that person? Was that prize conferred on him because of his religion? A Nigerian woman is the director general of WTO, World Trade Organization. Was that post given to her because she is a Christian or she is a Muslim? All these arguments of Muslim-Muslim uh, Muslim ticket has nothing to do with performance. People should learn to separate politics from religion. I don't buy that argument at all. Indeed. Indeed. Now, the person we are talking about, it is his handwork and product that we should measure, not the faith. Is it, the achievement that uh, Nobu made in Lagos wasn't because of his religion. And all, all the legacies he left behind are not being used by only Christians or only Muslims. So where has that one got, what has that one got to do with when we're talking about infrastructure? The man that you are talking to is not a Yoruba man, obviously. But see what he knows about Nigeria and what he knows about the legacy of Tinubu and how he's carrying it across to other parts of Nigeria. Has his religion got anything to do with that? We should talk serious business here, not about religion. We should not even give, please, don't even give access to this kind of topic in these serious times like this. Oh, right. Then. We, we need somebody who can take Nigeria to the next level. And this, Uncle Yori, somebody sent me the, the video of Sinopo's uh, interaction with and, um economic tommy group of Lagos, and I listened to it last night. I wish you can play it for everybody to listen to him. He spoke for more than two hours, and I didn't see him looking at any paper. And he was answering questions about how he's going to revise all the major sectors of our economy. You will see, you can see, even if somebody is blind, he can sense it that this man has the solution to these problems at his fingertips, it is not the same with okay. one who went to Chatham House and was reading a speech written for him by another person, which he didn't, he obviously didn't rehearse it. How many people, if the crowd at Kano and Manja and Joss and Quara were paid for, how much do you think each person would be paid? When a person that they like or they wish he would win, He's able to gather a, a good crowd. They will say, yes, it's a sign of acceptance. But if the one they do not like gathers a crowd that is bigger than the other, they say, hey, oh, crowd is All right. A, a, thank you very much, Mr. George. But I, I did delay you a bit. I've apologized. But then I tried to compensate by, you know, allowing you extra time. And then thank you uh, very much. Um, Etubon, you, you heard that. He sort of, you know, uh, would you like to react? Well, uh, he's, a, he's saying exactly what I have been saying. Yes. You know, I, my position has always been that um, what we do need now 
is a man uh, that is capable of giving us the kind of performance that Asiwa Bola, Asiwa Bola Abetinibu has shown before. And it has nothing to do with his religious background. In fact, what the man, the man captures the entire reason why some of us, who are not just Christians, but we are also not Yoruba, who would rather do everything to make sure that we have Ebola Abetinibu as our president. Uh, so I, I, I agree completely with the man. I, w I agree completely with George. Exactly. Well, uh, thank you, Begon. Well, people, they, they have this expression uh, in, in the Yoruba language that um, the horse of your enemy is not particularly tall, uh, that kind of a thing. Yeah, since you can't deny that he has a tall, uh, that he has a horse at all, uh, then the next thing is that, well, the, the horse is very, very short, that kind of a thing. So it's, um, it's a sort of a, a jocular expression, uh, but it is an expression. So we understand all of that. But we are coming, to, uh, we're coming up to the level where, you know, um, push must come to shove and people must decide. You hear about go and verify, go and verify. Uh, but as you were saying earlier, well, <laughs> never mind verification. It's on the ground there to see, uh, see that, extrapolate it again, keeping with that same expression about horses are not being tall enough once they belong to your enemy. Uh, people have said what they've said and you've debunked that whole situation. Um, but it's going to, be, you see it as a keenly contested, uh, you know, uh, exercise, the coming election. People are saying, oh, there's gonna, it's going to be a landslide, but uh, well, most a lot of... <laughs> Please continue, sorry. A lot of pundits have, uh, yeah, a lot of pundits are of the opinion that we're going to have a runoff uh, uh, in this election. I do not share in that sentiment. I believe that, I believe that Asiwaju Balabet Chinibu will win uh, at first ballot. Um, it's keenly, it's going to be keenly contested. After all, whoever wins this election uh, becomes the leader of the black race uh, in the world. And so it has to be keenly contested. It would have been a travesty if the presidency of Nigeria was not keenly uh, contested for. Uh, there has never been any time from 1999 till now that the presidency of Nigeria has never been keenly contested for. But we have the variables to give us victory. You know, whereas other parties are talking about, you know, like the PDP, the PDP talks about the fact that they expect our governors to betray us. And that is their path to victory. Uh, I think that is very unrealistic. It, it cannot be done. Uh, it, it is a wishful thinking. It is infantile. Um, on the other hand, the Labour Party believes that they have in their pocket the entire youth the uh, dire youths of Nigeria, the youthful population of Nigeria, are all in the in the corner of the corner of the uh, of the Labour Party. It is not also true. Uh, we have a realistic path to victory. One, we are we have mobilized all our structures across the nation, which is very formidable. Twenty-two governors, array of senators. House of Representative members, House of Assembly members, Chairman of Council, councillors, we have mobilized all of them across the nation.